In this video, we are going to examine Lewis structures. Lewis structures are covered in a general chemistry course, and this is going to be only a brief review. We are going to review electron dot structures, what are formal charges, and finally, how to draw Lewis structures. First, electron dot formulas represent, of course, as name indicates, electrons as dot. So each dot represents one valence electron. Here is a periodic table that shows only main group elements, because those are the ones that are usually represented by Lewis structures. And valence electrons on each atom are represented as dots. Note that some of these dots or electrons are paired, some are not. Lewis structures do not imply any particular electronic configuration. So electrons may or may not be paired up, but that does not imply any particular electronic configuration. Some attempt here has been made to show electronic configuration of atom as it is being as it is bonded, not electronic configuration in ground state, but uh, electronic configuration of bonding atom. But again, don't give too much importance to it. And here are some examples of Lewis structures. So typically Lewis structural formula represents electrons as lines, where each line represents an electron pair and three electrons as dots or unpaired electrons as a single dot. So a free electron pair is a pair of dots and unpaired electron, free electron as a single dot. Lewis structure in middle row can be represented without free electrons and unpaired electrons. So those would be understood that they are there and they are not represented. So representation of free electrons or non-bonding electrons is optional. And finally, instead of Lewis structures, we often use condensed formulas and they are shown in bottom row. So unlike Lewis structures, condensed formula shows to an extent bonding in the molecule. There are limitations to it, but it does not show type of bonding. So it does not show whether bond is single, double or triple. And sometimes, depending on how we condense that formula, it may not even show which atom is connected, connected to which one. For example, in last formula HClO2, it is not obvious that hydrogen is attached to oxygen. From this formula, it may appear that hydrogen is attached to chlorine. Before we can draw Lewis structure, we have to be familiar with the concept of formal charges. And formal charge, as name indicates, is just that, a formal charge. It's not real charge of an atom. It's charge of an atom that is assigned to an atom, but it's not an actual charge. The best way to understand it is that it is a bookkeeping method to keep track of valence electrons. So formal charge is calculated as number of valence electrons in the ground state of, an, of the atom minus number of assigned electrons in bonded atom. And of course, the question is how do we assign electrons? We assign electrons by splitting them evenly, by splitting evenly all bonding electrons. So electrons from bonds are assigned half to one atom and half to the other bonded atom, while non-bonding electrons are assigned only to atom that they reside on, that they belong to. And so here we can look at some very simple examples, uh, formal charges in water, hydroxide ion and hydronium ion. So. Uh, here are formulas of water, hydroxide anion, hydronium ion. First, let me look at formal charges in water. Of course, in each case, we look at formal charge of oxygen. In each case, hydrogen has formal charge. All these six hydrogen atoms have formal charge of zero. So water, formal charge on oxygen is six, which is number of valence electrons in ground state of oxygen, minus we have two bonds. And these are single bonds, that means two electrons per bond. And so one electron from each bond will belong to oxygen. So two times one, or two bonds, one electron from each bond. And plus, there are two free electron pairs on oxygen. And of course, each free electron pair has two electrons, so that's two times two. So overall, it's six minus six, or zero. Formal charge on oxygen in water is zero. Next, when we look at hydroxide and ion, Formal charge on oxygen is, again, six, number of valence electrons in ground state of oxygen, minus, now we have only one bond. So one 
times one electron from that bond, plus three free electron pairs, so three times two. Uh, so to, that's a total of seven. So six minus seven is minus one. And so formal charge on oxygen is minus one. And that's that minus that they place on oxygen atom in hydroxide Ni. And then finally, hydronium ion. So formal charge on oxygen is again six minus. Now we have three bonds. One electron from each bond belongs to oxygen, so three times one, plus only one electron pair. That's two more electrons. That's a total of five. So six minus five is plus one. So formal charge on oxygen is plus one, and we place this plus symbol on oxygen. And from this example, you can see that these charges really are formal charges. Because in hydronium ion, while we do have one positive charge overall for the ion, it's hydrogen atoms that share positive charge, not oxygen atoms. So oxygen atom does, is not really positively charged. Positive charge is shared by three hydrogen atoms. And in reaction, it's hydrogen atom that is then donated as a proton, as a cation. So from this, you can also draw a conclusion that overall charge of a molecule or an ion is the sum of the individual formal charges, if there is more than one. Now that we have covered formal charges, we can draw Lewis structures. Here are the nine steps. I will first list them, and then we'll look at an example. So to draw Lewis structure, first we have to determine the total number of valence electrons in the structure. Next step is to identify the central atom. And that's not always easy. Usually central atom is atom that is single atom of that type. So for example, in CO2, there is only one carbon, two oxygens, so carbon would be central atom. SO3, one sulfur, three oxygens, so sulfur is central atom. Uh, PCl5, phosphorus pentachloride, one phosphorus, five chlorine, so phosphorus is central atom. So that rule usually works. Uh, when there is identical number of atoms, like C2N2, then uh, central, in this case, atoms, obviously there have to be two central atoms, central atoms are usually the ones that are closer to the center of periodic table. That rule usually works, but not always. And there, in fact, there are a number of such similar rules to help us identify central atoms. But in some cases, you simply cannot reason that out. And you have to be told what are central atoms. So, tip, so usually you can identify central atom. And if you are not told which atom is central atom, simply use this rule that it's atom that is one of that type of atoms. Otherwise, you will be told. Then peripheral atoms are attached to central atoms. And finally, hydrogens are usually attached to peripheral atoms. But that's not always the case. Sometimes hydrogen is attached directly to central atom. And, and again, you cannot reason that out. When that's the case, you have to be told that. Then next, you write the structural formula of the molecule. And you con connect all the central atoms to peripheral atoms with single bonds. And of course, if there are any hydrogens, you attach them to peripheral atoms with single bonds. The reason why you use single bonds is that if there is bond, it has to be at least a single bond. So you assume it's at least single bond, and we need to keep track of electrons. Next, we calculate how many electrons we used up to form those single bonds, add them up, and subtract that from total number of electrons, from total number of valence electrons. Now that we know how many valence electrons are left, in the next step, step five, we distribute the remaining valence electrons as free electron pairs on the peripheral atoms. Keep in mind that you must follow octet rule. So you should not exceed octet rule. Even if peripheral atom could exceed octet rule, don't exceed it. So distribute only free electron pairs up to the octet. And keep in mind that any bond that is already there has two electrons. And then calculate how many electrons were used up to make uh, those free electron pairs that were distributed on peripheral atoms and subtract that total from whatever electrons you had left. This may leave you with zero electrons. Then you should move directly to step eight. If not, if there are any electrons left, then they should be placed on the central atom as free electron pairs. So that should take care of all the valence electrons. Now you distributed all the valence electrons. 
In the following step, step 8, calculate formal charges on all the atoms. And if there are neighboring formal charges that are opposite plus and minus, then in the final step, form multiple bonds. So cancel out those charges by moving electron pair from negatively charged atom, atom that has negative formal charge, move that electron pair to move to make a multiple bond, double bond, or if it's another bond, triple bond, with a positively charged atom. That will remove formal charges, it will eliminate formal charges and generate multiple bond, double or an additional bond, triple bond. And once you have completed that process, you have Lewis structure of the molecule. And here is an example, drawing Lewis structure of chlorous acid, HClO2. So first step is to calculate number of valence electrons. There is one hydrogen, so one atom times one valence electron, that's a total of one valence electron. Two oxygens, two atoms times six valence electrons, oxygen has six valence electrons, total of 12 valence electrons. And finally, one chlorine, chlorine has seven valence electrons, total of seven, when you add them all up, that's 20 valence electrons. Step two, central atom is chlorine. We identified chlorine, it's one, one of that type. So that's central atom, peripheral atoms are oxygens, so oxygens are attached to chlorine, and hydrogen is attached to peripheral atom, to oxygen. Step three, you connect all those atoms with single bonds. That's three single bonds. Each bond has two electrons, so step four, Six electrons were used up to form these three single bonds. That means that you are left with 14 valence electrons. In the next step, step five, we distribute as many electrons as we can on um, peripheral atoms. So oxygen atom that is bonded to hydrogen and chlorine already has four valence electrons from two bonds. So it can accept only four electrons or two free electron pairs. The other oxygen atom that forms only one bond to chlorine has only two valence electrons. So it can accept six more valence electrons or three more electron free electron pairs. So total two oxygen atoms between them accept, uh, accepted five valence electron pairs or total of 10 valence electrons. So in the next step, we have distributed, we calculate that we have distributed 10 valence electrons, so we had 14 left, 14 minus 10 leaves four valence electrons. In the step seven, we place those four valence electrons, so all of them, all remaining valence electrons, on chlorine as free electron pairs. So four valence electrons, that means two free electron pairs. In step eight, we calculate formal charges. I'm not going to do calculation for you, but you can pause video here and do calculation on your own. Once you do calculation, you will find that chlorine has formal positive charge of one and terminal oxygen, oxygen that forms only single bonds to chlorine, has formal negative charge, negative charge of one. To eliminate those charges, we are going to move one of the three electron pairs from oxygen to form double bond with chlorine. And that's the final step, step nine, and that's Lewis structure. Now, if you calculate formal charges, you will find that none of the atoms has any formal charge and all of the atoms have their octet fields, except for chlorine, which is third row element and can expand octet. So chlorine has expanded octet and formed a double bond with oxygen. And that brings us to a very important point. Sometimes charge separation remains. If atom, central atom is second period atom, that means boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, it cannot expand its octet. In that case, if there is charge separation, charge separation remains. And for, for, uh, formal charges remain. So Lewis structure is what we obtain actually in step eight. Molecules like that, that have charge separation are called Zwitter ions and will be covered later in your course. Here is one more example of drawing Lewis structure, in this case of ion, carbonate ion. So carbonate ion 
has formula CO3 to minus. And to calculate valence electrons, we have one carbon with four valence electrons, so a total of four electrons, three oxygens. So each oxygen has six valence electrons, total of 18 valence electrons. And finally, two negative charges. Whenever there is a charge, for each negative charge we add one electron, and for each positive charge we subtract one electron. So two negative charges, two electrons. Total of 24 valence electrons. Central atom is carbon, and it's attached to three oxygens. So steps two and three have been combined into a single step to generate formula in which carbon is shown as central atom attached by single bonds to peripheral atoms. Three bonds, so six valence electrons. We had 24 valence electrons, so 24 minus 6 leaves 18 valence electrons to distribute. In the next step, we can distribute actually all those 18 valence electrons as free electron pairs on oxygens. Each oxygen atom has, forms one bond, so these three oxygen atoms are actually identical. They form one bond to carbon, each forms one bond to carbon, and that means it can accommodate three free electron pairs or six valence electrons for a total of 18. And again, uh, when we calculate formal charges, so to speed up the process a little bit, we already calculated formal charges. Carbon atom has formal charge of plus one and each oxygen formal charge of minus one. And of course, all of the electrons are used up to distribute them on oxygens. We are left with no valence electrons, so no valence electrons are left to be placed on the central atom. In the next step, we form a double bond by moving at random. We could use any of those nine free electron pairs, simply move one of those free electron pairs to form a double bond with carbon, and that will form a carbon-oxygen double bond, and this is the final Lewis structure of carbonate Ni. Note that there are two negative charges left, one on each oxygen, and that's this 2 minus in CO3, 2 minus, that's that 2 minus, two negative charges that in this case are on oxygen atoms. Of course, this is an ion. So ionic compounds, when represented by Lewis structures, uh, often include oppositely charged ions. But those, cha those oppositely charged ions are only shown as being near uh, near uh, their counter ions. So in this case, we have negatively charged oxygen ions. And if this is, let's say, lithium carbonate, we can draw two lithium cations close to oxygens, or sodium carbonate to sodium cations close to oxygens, or magnesium carbonate, magnesium between two oxygens. So it's only covalent bond that is directional, and that is result of sharing of electron pair. So we represent that as a line. Ionic bond, is not represented that way. Ionic bond is simply represented as two ions in close proximity to each other. This completes this short review of Lewis structures. And in the next video, we are going to start introduction to organic chemistry.